nice having you again my friends and in this video we're going to be looking at the solution to uh, question 9b on the May 2012 CXE um, math exam past paper questions and solutions here they have stated in part B that an answer sheet is provided for this question if you notice here on my right hand side I have a copy of the answer sheet it is this um, graph that they gave us uh, with these uh, lines being drawn okay these lines repre represents uh, linear inequalities now quickly let's get into it it states a florist makes bouquets of flowers each consisting of X roses and Y orchids for each bouquet, she applies the following constraints. Now, a very important thing to take note of as we go through this question is that X represents the roses and Y represents the uh, orchids, okay? Now, here they gave us some constraints. The first one is the number of orchids must be at least half the number of of roses and in the second one there must be at least two roses in the third constraint uh, there must be no more than 12 flowers okay so quickly let's uh, look at what they're really speaking about um, in, in regards to part one they're asking us now to write three inequalities for the constraints given so for each constraint we're going to write an inequality and that's an easy three marks and I'm going to walk you through it okay so don't worry about it now here in part one let's answer part one here the first constraint states that the number of orchids must be at least half the number of roses. Now, X represents our roses and Y represents orchids. So what we're, the inequality that represents that is Y must be greater than or equal to half of X, okay? And if you note carefully, it said at least half the number of roses. So what they are saying is that the number of orchids can be half the number of roses or more than half the number of roses. Okay, that's what this at least means. Hence, that what that's why we use the greater than or equal to because it can be half but it can be more but it cannot be less than half okay now let's look at the second constraint it states that there must be at least at least two roses so for that what they're saying again here is that if x represents the roses then i am going to have to state that x must be greater than again or equal to 2. What this inequality is saying is that there must be at least. So there can be two roses, but it cannot go less than two roses. Okay? It cannot be one roses. It must be two roses, three roses, four roses, five roses, that sort of thing. Okay? So at least simply means it can be that amount or more than that amount. All right? Now, the third inequality states that there must be no more than, okay? And let me just underline that, no more than 12 flowers, okay? Now, X represents the roses, Y represents the orchids. So what we're going to have for that is X plus Y. And this no more than simply means that the number of flowers altogether the orchids plus the roses must be less than or equal to 12 okay so what that is saying is that you can have eight flowers or nine flowers you can also have 12 flowers because it says less than or equal to no more than so you can have a total of 12 flowers or less than 12 but you cannot have for example 13 flowers okay hope that that was useful so quickly let's move on to part two um part two of the question it states on the answer sheet provided, share the region of the graph, which represents the solution set for the inequalities in B1. Okay, and that's an easy one, Mark. Okay, my friends. So, so quickly, let's 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 look at that. Here, what they're saying, my friends, um, the region of the graph that satisfies the inequality would be the bounded region. If you notice the three lines, this uh, purple line here or this magenta and the orange line and the green line, the boundary region. OK, and what you're going to do, you're going to share the region of the graph that is bounded. OK, and if you notice, that's what I'm doing here. 
inside this it's like a triangle so inside this triangle would be the shaded region so what you do now you just simply shade that region okay of the graph and pretty much it's that easy that's what you do to answer that part of the question okay now in part three let's move on in part three now they're asking us to state the coordinates of the points which represents the vertices of the region shown in the solution set and that's an easy one mark okay guys now quickly um pretty much what you're going to do if you notice the shaded region that we have there on the graph that we have just shaded if you notice it's in the form of a triangle okay so what i'm going to simply be doing now my friends is that i'm just going to be looking for the vertices of this triangle that i have here if you notice this would be one point the points that bound the triangle where the lines intersect okay so the lines intersect there the lines also intersect here okay and i'm marking those points and also at this point okay so these three points are the bounded region or these are what we call the vertices the points that bound the region all right so quickly for part three you would state now you just simply state the coordinates so let's just get into that so the first coordinate let's start down here at this point if you notice if i'm at this point here that i've marked this vertices or this point if i come down on my x-axis the x value there is two and if i should go across on my y-axis the value there would be one on the y-axis so remember when writing coordinates you always write the x value first in that case the x value is two the y value is one okay now let's look at the second one okay let's look at the second coordinate let me just change the color so the second coordinate now uh, let's go up here let's use this one for the second uh, it doesn't matter which one though so here I would if I'm at this point and I come down on the x-axis I would come down at the point 2 again okay so my x value is 2 in that case however if I should go across from this point on, along the y-axis my y value would be 10 okay so that's a 10 there so that's the coordinate for that point so now let's go down to the third point now quickly uh, again let's just change the color just so that you can distinguish what's happening for the third point over here now my friends if i'm at this point and i should come down on my x-axis my x value would be eight okay and my y value if i should go across would be four okay and it's pretty much that easy so that's part three that's one mark so just state in the coordinates all right so let's now quickly move on to part four here it states the florist sells a bouquet of flowers to make a profit of three dollars on each roses and four dollars on each orchid now they are asking us to determine the maximum possible profit on the sale of a bouquet and that's another easy three marks and I'll show you how easy this is my friends uh, so no no need to get nervous about these kind of questions alright so basically what you're saying here you're saying that the profit P okay the profit P uh, if you notice X represents the roses okay so they are saying you would make a profit of three dollars on each roses so what that is simply saying 3x would represent the roses and they are saying now oh, and and remember and means to add so I'm just going to put my plus sign there okay and you're going to make four dollars on each orchid so you would have four y since y represents the orchid okay let me just pull this up a bit so we can have a little bit more space to work with okay let's okay we can yeah we can stop there okay good now what this is saying my friends you're basically going to substitute each point in this formula if you notice when we wrote down the coordinates in part three okay you had the x value and the y value so you're going to use the x value and the y value um the corresponding um values in the formula and the one that gives you the point or the set of the coordinate that gives you the highest amount that would that would be your maximum profit your maximum let me just change this that would give you your maximum profit the one that give you the least that would be that would be equal to your minimum profit okay so quickly let's look at it and, and I'm just going to work out all of them just for exercise to show you okay so bear with me so what we're saying here is P and I'm using the general formula here this general formula here that we came up with based on the information so P is equal to 3x plus 4y okay now let's use the first the first coordinate there what I'm saying P is equal to 3 times 2 if you notice I use the x value for the 2 plus 4 
times 1. And the second value is the y value. So I substitute it there. So what this is saying, 3 2's will give me a 6 plus 4 1's will give me a 4. So this would be equal to 10. Okay? Now, all right, that's the first coordinate. Let's look at the second one quickly. All right, so in the second case, I, I'm starting out again with my general formula. So P, and remember, this is part four we are working out. Okay, guys, this, this represents part four. So I'm saying P is equal to 3X plus 4Y. So this is equal to 3, and my X value here would be 2 again. So I'm saying 3 times 2. Okay, plus 4 times y, which is 10. Okay, pretty much. So this is equal to 3 2s, that will give me a 6, plus 4 10s, that will give me a 40. So this is really equal to a 46. Okay, guys? Now let's look, out, look at the third and final point, which is 8 4. Okay, and let me just change the color again. So over here now, again, remember we're starting out, we're always starting out with the formula that we derived from part 4. So that is 3x plus 4y. Now, in this case, the x value here is 8. So I'm going to say 3 times 8, okay, plus 4 times 4, okay? So this is equal to 3 eighths. That will give me a 24, okay? And 4 fours, that will give me a 16. And 24 and 16, that, will, that's, that looks like 40, Okay, so in this case, my friends, basically what has happened, if you notice, um, using all three points, first one we got 10, second one we got 46, the third one we got 40. So simply now, you just make a statement to say then that the maximum profit is $40, okay? And if they had asked you, just in case they had asked you for the minimum profit, you would have stated that since 10 is the least amount you got, you'd state that 10 is the minimum profit. But they didn't ask us that. We are just... We're just interested in the maximum profit, okay? It's pretty much that easy. So I'm just going to pause the video and make the statement. So there we have it. The maximum profit made on the sale is $46. And it's pretty much that easy, my friends, okay? See you in the next video. Bye-bye.